Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to the Atlantis 1957 Cadillac Eldorado Brome build. Last video we finished up from the differential all the way back to the back of the uh, frame with the bare, the matte aluminum bare metal foil to simulate a stainless steel exhaust system. And uh, this is a brand new stainless steel exhaust system. We're going to pretend because it is pretty shiny. I'm hoping that when I get my ultra bright bare metal foil chrome, uh, that it's quite a bit brighter than this to kind of offset the look. Because I would like to use this stuff on the actual top of the car to simulate the brushed stainless look that the original car had. But in this video, um, I did notice I forgot this little piece of exhaust just now. So we're not finished with the exhaust. Oh my goodness, we're going video number, what is it, five or six on the exhaust? Just a little tiny piece and then we're going to do the uh, gas tank. So we'll get this going. And after I get the gas tank finished, I'll have to paint that starter that I forgot. But the car is starting to it's starting to come along. It's starting to look like a Cadillac. And while I wait for my ultra bright chrome bare metal foil, and what else did I get? Oh, the paint for the M3 Lee. Anybody that's following that video, don't be worry, I have the uh, new paint coming. I almost braved it and was going to just filter my old paint, but there's so much that had been dried out, skinned over. I figured, well, we'll just, we'll hold off on that one. There's no sense in getting frustrated over um, trying to make something like that work out when, you know, a three-day wait, you get your, your new paint, so. That's the story on the M3. I'll be back on that, and... Gonna get the P40 into the back into the booth here for some clear. We're gonna get to do the fun stuff. Okay. And no, I haven't checked the last video to make sure that it, it's just not all the top of my head. I hope it's not. Because there ain't a whole lot, whole lot to see there nowadays. Well, I should say it's getting that way. I still got quite a bit of hair on my head. I shouldn't complain. Oh, no, we're not going to turn the model yet. We still got to do this. There we are. We got to do the arch over the top here. Like so. And I haven't changed the blade on this knife through this whole barrel metal foil process, so it's going to be, it's going to be due. before we do the trim on the outside. And we got rid of that mess. I 
got it stuck. What did I want and expect it did not happen. Maybe instead of poking holes in my paint to the area, maybe up with the toothpick, and we stick it down pretty good. I did not mess around there. So we'll go here. And get a little. Ooh. Yeah, I got that stuck down pretty good. I did not want to do that. Oh, I was able to get under it. Nice. Nice. that mess, but looking like I missed a spot to cut. I think we're alright. These smaller pieces have really been the challenge on this whole part. Get that cleaned up. There we go. Just gonna burnish it down here again with our it's down really good. Before we continued on with the fuel tank. There we go. Alright. So now we can officially say our exhaust system is done. Finished. Now I'm not sure how well this is going to work out because this is a lot of the flat part I'm not too concerned about is it going to fold over well all four ways I'm thinking I'm going to have to cut the corners maybe to get it to, to fold the way I want it but we'll see So we got to get it off the backing and onto the model, like so. Now this is where I messed up because I really meant to get a another cloth or something to go around this whole thing. Oh, we'll use our finger. Get another fresh Q-tip out. Boy, I need to replenish these there. I got one more after this. Let's get this burnished down really good. This is the part that I was worried about, getting it around that fuel tank. Little bump there. Actually, it's conforming to it quite nicely. Wow, that actually, actually very nicely. Huh. Like 
like that. How should we do this? Will lay flat if I do this? Not terrible. Let's flip it around and do the other side that way. Okay, it already split there. But I think we're fine with that. It, it actually landed where we needed it to go. So maybe we'll cut here, here, and then do the front and the back, get it down, and then cut there and there. Not the straightest cut there that I would have preferred, but let's see if it's all the way down. Okay, we might be able to work with that. This side laid down really well. Get that line like that. Now, what I think we'll do is take it where it's split and then just try to clean up the line a little bit better. that. I'm going to have to peel this up and try to cut it the rest of the way. And if I was to do this over again, I think what I would have done is did this in maybe three sections instead. But we're committed. And we're going to have to work with what we did here. So there. That's off like I want. Get rid of that. And let's take the toothpick here and flatten our line down. Not horrible. We got this is separated. So I'm gonna have to do some work with that, but that, that should lift off there on its own. And let's go ahead and get this one cut. Like that. Let's get that lifted up too, like we did. I'm glad it didn't lift those exhaust pieces off. I must have burnished them down pretty decent. Okay, good. That did separate. I know you can't see it because my hands are in the way. And I'll take the tweezers and kind of stretch and cut here. And we'll do the same thing that way. Now, get that out of the way. Let's take this toothpick again and just kind of lay our line down. Make sure that's nice and straight. That one turned out pretty good. I will say that's all right. I'm just kind of going to fold everything this way. that and we'll just cut it around
Go ahead and stick it all the way down here so we can get underneath it. Chip in the paint like so. Get a better bite at it and pull it off like that. Again, I'll take the toothpick and just kind of, with the edge, just going to straighten that line out like that. And then we'll do the back. But we should probably burnish it down first. I think the results will look a lot better if we do that. No, oh, it looks like I left a piece. Good. Got a little carried away there. I didn't want to quite burnish that whole thing down, otherwise it's going to be too tough to... Let's get the toothpick out and make sure we got a good... Not a good line to follow. Let's throw these away. We don't confuse them with the decent one. Let's get this out of the way. Are we still in the shot? Oh yeah, you bet we are. And let's go ahead and do our final cut here. Pull it around like so and through. And I'm thinking maybe I can get under it here. Like that. And like that. And I questioned it. Should I bare metal foil it? Should I not? I had the mat. I don't know what the ultra bright chrome looks like. It could come to my door and look exactly like this and it's gonna look like I got a chrome exhaust. Hopefully it's a little shinier and brighter. But this is not the real car. I don't want it to look like a toy either. And I've noticed a lot of people too, they they take the chrome pieces of their vehicles and they strip the chrome off and then they either paint it with the outclad or because uh, they don't like the shiny bright chrome. I probably won't go that far with this one. I'm not really, I want to see how these side trim pieces turn out with the outclad before I attempt to do something like that. So this is going to have the toy looking shiny chrome to it if anybody is wondering. Which I kind of like that on a 50s vehicle anyway. We did the the panel line accenting on the... There we go. See? Wiped right off. So there. This is our underside of our model. We got the bare metal foil exhaust. And fuel tank. And then we painted the transmission, the steel, and the blue for the engine, according to the closest color blue I had in the, the internet pictures that I saw. And I don't know if you still can, but you can see a slight differ, uh, difference in tone versus the shiny uh, body color and the frame. But I think it turned out all right. I'm happy with it. I don't think the results would have been as good if I would have painted it. And I was afraid, like I said in a previous video, of overspray um, to try to tape it off and just um, airbrush it. I, and I figured any type of brush painting I did was going to be all wavy lines. So 
I think this is the smoothest result that I could have come up with. And like I said, I hope the ultra chrome is ultra bright compared to this so we can see a difference. Especially, I won't do the top yet. I might paint the inside of it, paint the headliner part of it. But I want to see what that ultra bright chrome bare metal foil looks like compared to this matte aluminum. And uh, we'll go from there. But I'm going to call this a video. And I'm going to call the bottom. We'll have to paint the starter yet. I forgot about that. We'll paint the starter and then we'll get the wheels and everything on. But I'd like to thank everybody who's been following along. Everybody for watching. And you guys have a great day. See you guys next time.